comes out of nowhere and it's suddenly everywhere is the agenda. They want to create a hive human mind where basically you're just a computer terminal with no real individuality. I've refused to acquiesce to any of the diktats. Do you think more people should refuse to do it? Because otherwise, how, how will we ever make a change? It can't just be you. If one person does something, they can pick them off. But when very large numbers of people do it together, you see where the real power is. And it's not with these people in government and the psychopaths behind them. It's a matter of doing it in numbers. And to start that rolling, someone's got to start it. Because then we'll see where the power is. And it's not with the authorities. People are, are frightened of authority. They're frightened of challenging authority and not obeying authority. Because that's what we're programmed purposely to do. You come out of the womb and it, very soon you're sitting at a desk and an authority figure is telling you what you can do and can't do, when you can eat, when you can talk, when you can go to the toilet and all these other things that happen once you enter the school system. And then there are punishments and, and, and rewards for obeying authority or not obeying authority all the way through your formative years because they are preparing you for life to be acquiescent to authority and to fear challenging authority. There's no need to fight the government or fight the cult behind government. There's no need to go on protests and wave batters, no need for any of that. You just need to say, no, I'm not doing it. We're not doing it. And then you'll see where the real power is because you'll realize that enforcing it without our acquiescence is impossible. Now is the time to say no. And that's all it takes, no. If the 1% was basically going to get control, it had to rebrand itself as the supporters of the other 99%. And you do that via the left, not the right, from the perception of the population. And so now you've got the left standing for everything the old left didn't. And you've got the right pushing for protecting civil liberties and freedom of speech. And if you are going to move into a world, which is what they plan, of the end of countries, the end of nations, then your conservatives with a small c, they are much likely or more likely to want to conserve, to want to protect the status quo, protect the society. We shouldn't get pulled into the idea that we are dealing with an all-powerful force. That's what they want us to believe. We're not. We're dealing with the equivalent of frightened little boys and girls in short trousers who know that they can only survive and they can only continue to advance their agenda, indeed survive any agenda, if they keep the population a, in ignorance that there is an agenda and that there is a force behind the, the direction of human society. And B, they keep the target population in a sense of powerlessness and in a sense of little me, what can I do? And they have to hold those two things because if they don't, the game's over. Like I say, the game's over if enough people just say, no, we're not doing it. No, we're not doing it. It's over. That's how tenuous this cult is in its holding on to power. And it knows it. It knows that its power and its agenda can fall in a ridiculously short time if the perceptions of humanity change and if there's any free flow of information to expose and unravel its ludicrous narratives that we're supposed to believe. And this is a very dangerous time for this cult. Although it seems to hold the aces, likes to think it does, it's a very dangerous time because there is the mentality which can be incredibly powerful 
and world changing of nothing left to lose. When you think you've got something to lose, you can acquiesce in the hope that you won't lose it. And while you have, you feel you've got something to lose, you will acquiesce or are likely to acquiesce in the hope of protecting it. And what they're doing is they're systematically confusing young people and children about their gender who weren't confused before and wouldn't have been confused unless this manipulation to confusion had, uh, had been implemented. And the process is to confuse gender on the road to fusing gender to the no gender human. Why acquiescence is so important. How can a few people in this cult dictate to the lives of billions like this? Think of a pyramid. The top of the pyramid, you've got the cult. Tiny few people in relation to the population. And this pyramid, which is human society, is hierarchical. So the cult at the top of the pyramid imposes its agenda on the next level, which acquiesces to that imposition, and it itself then imposes on the next level. Now, as you come down this pyramid, you're very few steps down before you reach the point where the hierarchy doesn't even know there's a, there's a cult. Only these higher in around the spider, as I call it, levels know that there's a cult, unless you work your ass off for 30 years to uncover it. And so you then hit a level where they're not aware of where this is coming from. But the same sequence continues. So this level will impose on this level, which acquiesces to the level above and imposes on the level below. And this goes down the pyramid, imposition, acquiescence, imposition, acquiescence, imposition, acquiescence, until at the bottom of the pyramid, symbolically, you meet the mass of human society, the population. Now, if we acquiesce to the level of the pyramid that's imposing on us, then we complete a circuit. We complete a circuit between the population and the tiny few in the cult, which has allowed the agenda of the cult to impose its will on the entire population. If we will break that circuit by not acquiescing to that level seeking to impose upon us, we break the circuit. And no longer are they, the cult at the top of the pyramid imposing their will on the population because we have broken the connection. And we've broken it simply by ceasing to acquiesce to the level of imposition imposing on us you know there's nothing to fear. Because whatever happens, whatever experiences we're having, we are always an expression, a point of attention within all that is, has been, and ever can be. And however bad the experience we're currently having, that is what we always are. All that is, has been, and ever can be. And so this does not fear. This will always do what it knows to be right and therefore does not consider consequences for doing what it knows to be right because it would never consider doing anything but what it knows to be right. Thus, consequences... This says, I'd like to do this, but what are the consequences? And you'll always find a list of consequences why you wouldn't do it. This says, I do what I know to be right. Consequences, therefore, are not even a conversation. What we need to do is to put down the fault lines. They're ludicrous fault lines, for goodness sake. It's only a brief experience. What you are is consciousness. You are a point of attention, a unique point of attention. Celebrate that uniqueness for a start. You are a unique point of attention within an infinite flow of consciousness. Having a brief, stunningly transitory experience as a human. And what is a human? It is a particular way of processing and decoding information. That's all human is. The human form processes and decodes information 
in a certain way that we call human. So when near-death experiences leave the body and leave that processing, decoding system that I call the biological computer, they, their reality dramatically changes. Stop identifying with labels. They are a brief experience. Even your name is a brief experience. You are the consciousness having the experience. So when someone says to you, who are you? You are all that is, has, has been and ever can be having an experience. If you meet someone and people say, who are you? They'll give you their name. They'll give you their job. They might give you their family background, their, their family history, where they went to school. That's what they're saying they are. Who are you? But that's just what they've experienced. Who am I? All that is, has been and ever can be having an experience called David Icke. Very brief, very interesting. The point of attention that I am is an expression of the same consciousness that the point of attention that you are is. And the same with all of us. So racism and all these isms and all these divisions are not only undesirable, they are confirmation that those that go down that road are utterly clueless about the nature of reality and the nature of who they really are.